Controlling your orientation is a very powerful feature inside of ZBrush, and it's not often uh, used or discussed. So there are two types of, well, three types of control. You can select uh, once orientate, continuous orientate, and then a specific orientation. The, uh, the, the picking process really goes by wherever your cursor is. So if uh, my cursor is right here at the side of the nose, then it's going to pick a surface normal facing the direction of this orange arrow. Uh, if I am hovering up underneath the eyebrow, then it's going to be down and to the right. That's going to be the surface uh, normal that it's picking. Uh, when I have once orientate on, then the first point that I click, that normal is going to be the, uh, the primary direction of my brush. My brush is not going to change its direction. Continuous orientate is different in the sense that it is continuously sampling the surface normal. So this is more useful when we are doing blending or form building or uh, just you know refining planes. Choosing a specific orientation, which we'll see in, a, in just a second, allows us to define very clear, very controlled planes. Now let's take a look at that in action inside of ZBrush. I'm going to dock the picker palette off to the side and we're focused on just the orientation settings. And these are really the steering wheel of ZBrush. So by default, uh, the brushes are designed to just run along the surface, adjust and continuously sample, which allows them to be nice and smoothly uh, conforming to that uh, surface but sometimes you want to take full control of the steering inside of ZBrush and just lock those wheels to a certain direction or lock the behavior to a certain path. The uh, trim dynamic brush is by default set with continuous orientate on and that's the smooth conforming behavior. But if we switch to trim adaptive you'll see that has once orientate on and its behavior is to pick the first normal that it clicks on and enforce that angle. So I could click on the side right here and then enforce that plane all the way up and this is a 2D plane that gets created right where I click and all the rest of the surface is being forced to conform to that. I could also choose an angle and then everything would be conformed to that specific direction. And this provides a lot of opportunities to mess with the model uh, but the primary usefulness is when we get into mechanical uh, hard form sculpting. So in this case there may be some angles that we want to perpetuate or enforce to just emphasize the uh, the plane or the the that part of the model. Now let's click once orientate, and I'll drag all the way up. The one thing to note about trim adaptive is that if you run the uh, stroke around a bit, you can start to cut in and establish new planes. The key is to draw one stroke, then make a circle to cut back upon that stroke, and then come back up. Now another trim brush that uh, uses the orientation is trim front. Trim front uses the specific orientation that has been dragged uh, or sampled directly from the canvas. Notice I'm just clicking and dragging. And that allows this brush to cut directly uh, perpendicular to the canvas. So I can just cut straight in here. And that will be uh, exactly perpendicular to where this was on the canvas. Now one tip to using this kind of process is to store your morph target make your brush stroke which 
in this instance is destructive for some of the surrounding surfaces and then switch to the morph brush and uh, restore it only in the area that you want to though you may have some cleanup to do at the edges but now you've got a straight line so the picker palette will help you control where your brush is steering inside of ZBrush and this is just another level of control uh, for you so I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching